Ah, is this you? Month end. Maths is not mathing. Because you're trying to figure out what happened to your salary. Meanwhile, you know the answer is staring right back at you. Mm? Playing any mini mini mo with your monthly bills. Grocery, cell phone bill, rent. Mm? Adulting and budgeting. Same WhatsApp group. Hi, Demi. I thought getting a degree would be the hardest part about this adulting thing, but now I feel like the real struggle has just begun. Juggling rent, groza, family, responsibilities and stuff, the student loan, also us liking things and wanting to live my best life. I need help because I feel like I don't know if I'm coming or going. I miss kicking with my people. Aww. I've heard about this thing they call budgeting. How do I do that and not get cancelled by my besties for being boring? Ah, uh, where did my money go? I got you, girl. I'm Demi Marag and you know I got your plug. <laughs> so, today I got you Kawilishe. Born, we're in good hands, ne? Because Kawilishe's specialty is dealing with consumers, customers, get your people in jail. And her job is understanding their financial habits. Welcome, Kawelishe. You head up personalization at APSA, right? Now tell me, how did you become such a powerhouse in finance when you come from construction? I just started my career with safety boots and hard hats. I used to build projects around Joburg in a construction company as a site manager. But I wanted something bigger for myself. That's when I moved into management consulting. And it's through management consulting that's when I found my passion towards financial services. So I did a lot of work on sales and service operations, as well as the touch transformations for, for banks. And that's how I ended up at APSA. And since then, I have been working on personalization. And what we focus on is how do we create that customer experience for um, our customers that is very much linked to you know, what their needs and desires are. So using data and tech to enable that personalization and that personalized experience for them. Yeah, well, when we talk about needs and desires, you are right up my alley. Because at Where Did My Money Go is struggling with adulting, right? Because now here we are, you have to deal with Krosa, you have to deal with rent, you have to deal with your bank, your, your cell phone bills. At the same time, you're trying to live a nice life because, you know, the streets are always calling. <laughs> and I read somewhere, okay, to be honest, I didn't read it, I saw it on TikTok. They say that a budget is like the master plan for your income and expenses. Is this true? That's true. So a budget is actually a master plan. So I like to think of it as your personal kind of superhero cape. So it keeps you, you know, from those financial villains that are around. So budget, when you think about it, it's about income and expenses, right? So your income can be things that um, are providing money into your account. So that could be either your salary, your side hustle or a very generous family member that has given you some money. And then your expenses are those things that kind of take away from your money. So things like you mentioned, your rent, your groceries, transport to get to work. So those things you actually need to manage quite well to ensure that your money goes a long way. So when you think about budget, you want to make sure that you are categorizing all of these things in the right way so that at the end of the month, you know that you haven't spent more than you've earned, which then avoids you from getting into a death trap. So when you are in debt, it creates a financial stress for you that you want to then avoid. So having a budget then allows you to have more control over your money uh, versus your money actually just sort of being wild and going all over the place where you have no idea where you've spent it. Hey, hey. Well, one of this issue of wild and all over the place, right? If I'm to understand you correctly, my expenses, I can't treat them all the same. Exactly. So expenses, as much as they all take out money from your account, yeah. you need to categorize them differently because they are quite different. So I like to think of expenses in sort of three categories. One is your essential expenses. The second is non-essential and then your luxury expenses, which is my personal fave. So when you think about essential expenses are the things that you need to actually be able to survive. So things like housing, shelter, um, transport to get to and from work so you can earn that income and then things like your, your general bills. And then for your um, non-essential expenses are the things that you could actually live without. So if you were to cut back on them, you'd still be able to survive. So things like your gym membership. Going to the gym is great, but you could also just go for a run and avoid that cost altogether. And then your luxury expenses are the ones that actually tend to derail your budget. So things like that designer bag and those nice things that you like to do with your friends where you go out for dinner and you spend a lot of money. So those are the things that you can cut back on and be able to then save. And then that allows you to have more control over your budget. And then 
avoid those debt related expenses. Huh. So you must separate your needs and your wants, if I'm understanding you correctly. Exactly. But what if I want to need it? <laughs> <laughs> so I think needs and expense and, and wants are common, right? There's been a common debate. What's the difference yeah. between a need and a want? So if you think about your needs in the category of what your sort of essential expenses are, so you need to have a shelter, you need to have food in your stomach, and you need to have basic clothing. Those are things that you cannot live without. Life would be tough if you didn't have those things. And then if you think about your wants, these are the things that are sort of nice to have. So you don't really need to have the latest phone if your phone is kind of working already. So you can kind of cut back on those things. And if you're able to control and differentiate between what your needs and your wants are, then you're actually able to manage your finances a whole lot better. Ah, uh, cow. So you're saying those really nice boots that I want are not a need. Like, I can't. They're really nice. I really want to have them. But I feel like you're telling me a budget is a strafe, which does not let me have fun. No. So as much as the boots are not a need, um, it doesn't mean that your budget can't accommodate for them, right? Oh. It just means that you have to have really proper planning. So, for example, what you could do is you set aside some money that you know is very much going to be dedicated towards the things that you want that aren't necessarily essentials. So as long as you make sure that you cover your essentials first, and then you can sort of play around with the rest of the, of the needs that you have. So once you set aside your budget, you can have your essentials then covered, um, and then you can go into the stuff that you want, like your travel or that, that nice pair of boots that you're thinking about. <laughs> but the budget essentially becomes your financial conscience. So making sure that you're being responsible with your money and you don't end up in a debt situation. Right. So it's almost like I have money for bread and milk, but I know I can buy myself sweets with the change, if there's change, right? Okay. So what are the benefits of drawing up a budget? So budget has many benefits, right? So... You actually, the first benefit, and I think the only benefit that really, really matters is you are being in control of your money. So it puts you at the driver's seat of your finances. So that allows you to then make very specific decisions on what, you, what your goals are and be able to drive towards those goals. So knowing what is coming into your account, what has to go out, which is your essentials, and then what are the things that you have from your financial goals perspective. I have a trip that I've go to Kenya in the next year. How do I then... Uh, reorganize my, my finances in a way that I will then be able to fund that. So cutting back on your non-essentials, like your coffee every day, bring that coffee at home, will allow you to then make up that space for you to be able to enjoy the finer things in life and have a much more stress-free financial um, situation as well. So the budget, meh, it's like a Bible for your money, but is it flexible? Yeah, so a little bit flexible, but essentially when you think about a budget, it's you having a very clear picture of what's happening with every rent and cent that is in your account. Um, so it creates a map for you that makes decision making around spending a lot clearer. So if you're able to have a lot more discipline around your spending and you're able to have a lot more um, discipline around your saving, then that's how your budget ends up working for you. So you're able to make sure that the things that you're spending on, you're aware of them and how they influence your financial goals. So every impact that you have is seen through your, your budget. And that's how you then control it. So it might not be a Bible per se, but it allows you to have that discipline around what's happening with your finances. So you're in more control. So you can do the more fun things in a more stress-free way. And you can make those purchases without regrets later on. Oh, I like it. Now you're not looking and asking questions and the math is not mapping when you're accusing your wallet of eating your money. Exactly. Sure. How will you share about those boots? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think they're so nice. <laughs> <laughs> Find out how to budget for your goals and rewrite the story of your finances with I Grew It. Absa, your story matters. Ooh.